Hello, and welcome to my complete interface and settings guide for RuneScape 3. With the necromancy style coming out, combat is the most accessible it's ever been. It's more intuitive than ever before, and now is a fantastic time to sink your teeth into RuneScape 3. But there's always been one massive shortfall in my opinion in RuneScape, and that is the user interface and the settings menu. It is absolutely ridiculous. It is incredibly daunting. There are literally hundreds of different options hidden away in different areas. So what I thought we would do today is I would actually reset my interface completely and rebuild it from scratch with all my interface tips, all of my settings, and then that way you could follow along and end up with a nice looking clean interface for your RuneScape playing. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on the new player loadout that the game defaults you to. To access this menu, all you have to do is hit escape and you get to the options menu. From here, I'm going to click new player. Before we get started, if you load in your new player interface that you're starting out with and it looks either way too zoomed out or way too zoomed in, I've got a menu for you. You're going to hit escape and then go to settings and then graphics. And you're going to find, if you scroll down a little bit, interface scaling. This is how you'd fix that problem. So if you wanna get it looking just like this, you may have to scale your interface down or up. If you scale it down, it will make everything smaller. And if you scale it up, what you're gonna find is everything is gonna be significantly bigger. So depending on the resolution of your monitor and the size of your monitor, you may need to play around with a setting before you get started. For me though, I'm gonna leave it on 100% and that should work very well for the majority of people. Now that we've got our scaling set, it's time to continue. Okay, now that we're into the default new player interface, this is probably looking something similar to what you have. So now we're gonna go through the settings one at a time and slowly but surely, we're gonna build out a perfect interface for playing RuneScape. First thing I'm gonna do is hit escape and then click on settings. And then we're gonna go into gameplay and interfaces. In here, you'll see a bunch of useful information like mouse over text, which is absolutely awesome if you're a newer player because it gives you extra tool tips with additional information when you're hovering over things. I also really like walk markers. What they allow you to do when toggled on is they actually put a marker on the ground wherever your character is walking to. This is really nice when you're trying to learn basic positioning because sometimes you can click sort of in between two tiles and if walk markers are off, you'll have no idea where you're actually going. As you can see with them off, I don't actually know which square I'm going to. So this is a menu that I always like to have on. The only other setting within settings game interaction that I think is really important is skipping boat cutscenes. Anytime you travel otherwise, you'll get this long annoying cutscene that you have to X out of. Click this toggle, you'll never see one ever again. Inside your appearance menu, there are a couple really important settings. The first one is slim headers. This is really useful in terms of saving space because by the end of this, our interface is gonna be quite big. What this is gonna do is it's gonna remove all the titles for all the interface that I have open. So instead of displaying backpack and skills, if you hit slim headers, all of a sudden it won't say either of them. The other thing you can do here is you can hide your title bars when locked, which I also generally like to have on. And this is also just gonna save you more space. You'll see on the bottom right hand of your screen that as soon as I toggle this, you gain a little bit of extra space at the top. Next up, we have transparency. Transparency is useful for some players and it really comes down to personal preference. I personally like it off, but if you are someone that likes it on, you can make all of your interfaces transparent. The next very important menu within this interface is edit mode. And this is where you do the bulk of your interface building. Once you access edit mode, you're gonna hit advanced options. And from here, you're gonna have an absolute ton of options that you can toggle and you can change the placement of just about everything. The base ones like XP pop-ups and crafting progress are fine where they are, but there are a lot of other ones that you may wanna customize and place around. For example, your boss instance timer defaults on the top left hand of the screen, and it might be better placed somewhere a little more central where you can actually see it. The same with the boss kill timer, you may wanna move that down as well. You can also find your combat target information, which is stashed away by default at the top left hand of your screen where you will never see it. This includes vital information like your hit chance with whatever you're fighting, so my recommendation would be to put this somewhere a lot more central. We also have the buff bar and the debuff bar, and these are also very important. When you're PVMing, a lot of the time you're gonna be scanning between your action bars and your buff bar and debuff bar very quickly, so you wanna make sure that the buff bar and debuff bar are also somewhere central and close to your action bar. The extra action button is also a very important one. It's used in a lot of PVMing, and although it can also be keybound, you may want it appearing on screen, once again, somewhere central where you'll be able to see. This isn't gonna be constantly in play, but for certain boss fights, you'll see a button appear here and you'll be able to click it. The last and most important aspect of edit mode is the game view. If you don't want your character to be completely central in your interface, you can toggle game view and then you can actually drag your game view and change the size of it. It's kind of hard to get your mouse onto it, but once you've got it, all of a sudden you can actually put it wherever you want and change all of the dimensions. This can be extremely useful for a lot of different interfaces. For example, for me, I don't like my character completely centered. 
And my personal preference is to have the game view a little bit smaller than the actual game screen, because I don't want the majority of my game view to be covered by interfaces later on. This allows me to get a more complete view of the game without anything being blocked or covered. But if you played with transparency on, you'd probably want to keep it full. Once we're finished messing around with edit mode, we want to hit save and exit. You might be thinking this looks significantly worse than it did at the beginning, but wait and see, and in a few minutes, we're going to have something that looks absolutely fantastic. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to this ribbon at the bottom part of the screen. Contained within this ribbon is a lot of information, like your abilities, your powers menu, your adventurous tab, your customizations, your community stuff, your friends, your grouping system, and a whole lot more. But most importantly, we have the lock on the top right. As soon as you unlock this, customization is enabled, and all of a sudden, I can move around all of my interfaces and put them wherever I would like them. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually build out an interface from the ground up, starting from nothing. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out all of these information windows on the top left side. I don't need my quest interface here. I don't need my activity tracker or my achievement path. So we're gonna get rid of all of those. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the ribbon itself all the way to the top and I'm gonna make it a little smaller because the default ribbon wastes a ton of space. Already starting to look a lot better. Now we've got all these gaps on the right hand side and the bottom of the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand my mini map to get rid of that gap. I also want to be able to see my worn equipment at all times. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to drag out this worn equipment slot and I'm going to expand it ever so slightly. Instead of an interface that just displays what I have equipped, I like to actually see my character. In order to do that, you just need to make it ever so slightly bigger. Once it's large enough, you'll be able to see your whole character and also spin them around. Next up, I'm going to take my skills menu from the bottom right and I'm going to open it up and place it here. You can change the configuration to whatever you like, but personally, I like this. And now I'm going to move up my game chat just to match. Next up, I'm going to combine my skills tab and my prayer tab to save space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag the prayer tab on top of the skills tab. And as you can see, it now appears on top of it and I can toggle between the two. This is nice because I don't always need to have my skills open and when I'm doing combat, having my prayer open is a little more useful. But now I've got this annoying scroll bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bump out this prayer interface and make it ever so slightly larger until this bar disappears. A tip for making an interface in RuneScape as well is if you've got a very small bar, sometimes what will happen is if you lock your interface, as the header disappears, the bar will disappear as well. So even though while we're editing it, it looks like there's a little scroll bar, there isn't actually one. So we don't have to worry about it. Next to my prayers, I'm actually going to place my first action bar. The amount of action bars you need completely depends on your play style and your level of experience. But for the majority of players, only having one, maybe two at most on screen is probably all you need. That being said, with the stuff that I'm doing, I'm going to need more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my settings menu. I'm going to go combat and action bar and then action bars. And from here, I'm going to scroll down to display additional action bars. We're going to go through all these settings a little bit later on, but for right this second, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the additional four bars that I want to have on my screen at all times, which for me are four, 12, seven, and nine. And now all of a sudden, we've got a whole bunch of action bars on the screen. So the next thing we need to do is position them in a way that looks nice. I'm going to put bars four and 12 above my main action bar, and I'm going to put seven and nine below. Action bars can be displayed as a one by 14, but you can also click drag them and display them as a two by seven. There's no difference between the two other than personal preference, but for me right now, we're gonna go with a two by seven. And now that my action bars are sorted, I'm gonna drag them down all the way to the bottom of my screen. Next to my action bars, I'm also gonna drag my invent. Generally speaking, you wanna keep your eyes when you're PVMing central to your character, your action bars, the stats on your action bars and your adrenaline bar, and your invent. So you're gonna notice everything I'm using for PVMing is gonna appear very, very close to each other on my interface. The next important tab is my spells tab, and I'm actually gonna put it on top of my prayers as well, just to save space. From within this tab, you can look at your teleports, your skilling spells, your combat spells, and your magic abilities. And for me personally, I'd like all four of them, but if you only wanted one specific type, like for example, your teleports, you can actually click drag just the teleports themselves and you can turn them into their own little interface. So let's say I only wanted my teleports to be next to my prayers. All of a sudden, I've got just the teleports. For me though, I'm gonna keep the entire interface and it's all gonna be listed here under magic. I don't need them all to be under their own tabs and this way it's a little bit less cluttered. I've got my skills, I've got my prayers, and then I've got all my magic stuff. The game is also gonna remember whatever I last accessed, so if I usually wanna use this only for skilling spells, if that's the last thing I clicked on, whenever I open up the tab, it will default to that. I've got this space on the bottom right-hand corner of my screen, and there are three more interfaces that I want to occupy this space. The first is gonna be my drops. 
This is going to show any loot that's around my character in the interface, and it's going to allow for instant quick looting with the space bar. But in order to do that, we have to set it up. So let's go into our settings and go down to item drops. And within item drops, here's what we're going to want to do. The first thing I'm going to toggle is single items open loot inventory. But to do that, we also have to toggle multiple items open loot inventory. What this is going to do is it's going to allow any item that I try to pick up to open up the looting interface. You're also going to want to toggle on use area loot. It is an extremely important functionality and it allows you to loot anything in an area around your character. When we have a limited invent space, we can actually set it up specifically to determine what kinds of drops we want picked up and which ones we don't. For me personally, I like to keep this on default and I set my monetary value here to 1000. But now, how do we actually get the loot interface open? In order to do this, we're going to go back up to our ribbon that we've moved now to the top left hand side of the screen. And right over this M icon for rune metrics, we're going to hover over it and we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom to drops. All we have to do from here is click on it. And now we've got our drop log that is open. Once we've got our drop log interface, let's click on the settings cog and set it up. We can set it either for anything that appears on the floor or anything that you actually picked up. My personal preference is drop, because if I'm AFKing, I want to know if I missed a big drop or I missed a pet drop on the floor. Once we've got it set up to our liking, we can close out of this interface. We've looked at the settings cog wheel on the bottom left, but right next to it, we have this button right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up our looting interface. Because there aren't enough items around me to loot, we won't actually be able to pre-place this interface unless we actually find some loot around us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully and very quickly murder some bunnies. Now at this point, you'll see my looting interface has appeared. And wherever we save it at, will continue to appear here for as long as we would like. So you want to put this somewhere that is not overlapping with other interfaces. You also may not like the default dimensions of this interface. And if you're someone that isn't a fan of it, you can go into edit mode and you can change it there. Open up edit mode, and all we're going to do here is we're going to look for the loot interface. And there it is. And from here, we should be able to play around with the dimensions and make it look like whatever we'd like it to. And I think that looks a lot better. So we're going to save our layout. And now when I try to pick up the raw rabbits, you'll see that it appears just like this. In order to pick up the raw rabbits, all you have to do is hit the space bar. Now that we've got area loot sorted, let's continue to build out our perfect interface. I'm going to share my equipment tab with all my social tabs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to my ribbon and I'm going to click on the community tab. From here, I'm going to go to social. Within social, I can view all of my notes, my friends chats, my friends lists, and my clan chats. And from here, all you have to do is click and drag these interfaces to wherever you'd like them. I'm going to put all of them in the same spot. I've got my clan. I've got my friends chat if I was in one. And then for my friends list, it's not letting me click drag it. And the reason it isn't is because my friends list is already on my screen. For whatever reason, it got hidden in my regular central interface. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drag it from there and I'm going to throw it where I want it. I'm going to change the order around. And now I've got all my social stuff in the right spot. But because we've got these tabs now, my gearing and worn equipment interface is now not going to actually fit correctly. And my character himself is not displaying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly lock my interface and see if my character shows up. And because he doesn't, we're going to make it ever so slightly bigger. Try it one more time. And there we go. We're perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head into my powers menu. This is where all of your abilities are. A lot of players like to have tabs of every single ability that they can cycle through so that they can edit their action bars on the fly. If you're someone who wants to do this, this is the point where you would go through here and you would actually drag down every single one of these ability books and throw them really wherever you'd like to. You could combine them in with something else, you could throw them in part of your central interface, whatever your preference is, so that they are on your screen. So that would look like this. We've got melee abilities, we've got our ranged abilities, we've already got our magic abilities, We've got our necromancy abilities, and we could just fill them all out so they're all appearing on our screen. For me, I don't access these abilities that often, but it completely depends on your personal preference, and there's nothing wrong with setting it up this way if you would like to. And from here now, we've got our melee abilities, attack and strength, our ranged abilities, our necromancy abilities and incantations, and then our defense and constitution abilities all appearing on our screen. One thing I would advise doing though, is if you are playing through the necromancy skill, you may want to get your necromancy incantations and put them somewhere available. So for me, I'm going to actually throw them into their own interface just by click dragging the incantations off. And then from there, I'm actually going to combine them over here with my magic so that my magic spells are right next to my necromancy incantations. At the same time, I don't need my incantations appearing twice on my screen. So I'm actually going to drag out and remove this necromancy combine tab and then replace it with just the Necromancy Abilities tab that's been popped out. 
While I'm here, I'm going to do the same thing with my defense abilities. I'm going to drag them out individually, and the same with my constitution abilities. I'm going to get rid of this combined tab, and then I'm actually going to throw the individual tabs down into my interface. So now I've got every combat style properly incorporated in my interface, and all the abilities are right where I need them. Do the same thing with attack and strength. And just like that, I now have every single combat style properly accounted for and in the right spot. Reorder them however you see fit. And now if I ever need an ability or to change any of my action bars up, I know where to find them. The last two important interfaces for my setup are my summoning interface and my group interface. For the summoning interface, I'm gonna click on my powers menu. I'm gonna scroll down to familiar and I'm just gonna click on it. It's gonna appear somewhere on your screen. And from there, I'm gonna drag it down to fill up this bottom space. Upon summoning a familiar, its information is now gonna appear in that interface. It's got its life points, its special move scrolls, all that good stuff. And you can actually interact with it, call it, and dismiss it directly from this interface. And last but not least, I've got my grouping interface. From social, I'm gonna go grouping system. And then from here, I'm gonna grab the group chat list. This is really useful as a way to inspect the gear and the stats of other people on your PVM teams, and also to be able to see their life points in real time. So this is a really vital one to have open. And I'm gonna share it here with my familiar interface. This is nice because if I don't have a summoning familiar, it's just gonna say familiar currently unavailable, which isn't the best look ever. So what I can do is I can default to my group settings and my group menu. And then that way, if I'm in a group, I can use the group menu. And if I'm not on a group, I can monitor my familiars. And now the very final step is gonna to be to lock our interface and make sure everything looks good and is where we want it to be. And I'm really happy with this. I think as a basic interface, it's a very good jumping off point, but as always, it is really personal preference. But this was the easy part. And now we have to actually try to tackle the absolutely ridiculous RuneScape settings menu to actually make sure that we've got everything set up exactly how we want it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit escape to view my settings, interfaces, information windows. And from here, we can toggle on and off a lot of different things. XP pop-ups you're gonna want on, Collection log pop-ups you're probably going to want on, and the same going to be said about information pop-ups. The guidance system, in my opinion, isn't the best, so to me, I have it toggled off, but if you're a completely new player, it may not be a bad idea to have it on. You can also see that I've got a Slayer and Reaper counter on the top right-hand corner of my screen. I can expand it by right-clicking on the top right of it, and then shrinking it or expanding it as I see fit. If you don't want this visible on your screen, you can simply turn it off. You can also toggle on and off your boss kill timer and your boss instance timer. I'm not really fussed about my instance timer, but my kill timer is very important to me. Next up, we're gonna go into warning screens. Here you can actually change where you want your bank pin enforced and where you don't. For me, I like to have a high value drop warning on as well as a high risk area entry. This is nice because it requires a bank pin to go to certain areas in the game. You can also toggle if you want your pin to be required every single time you log in, or if you only want it to be required if you're logged out for over 10 minutes. Personally, I keep this off. You can also set up your warnings for a number of different things, including purchasing items over certain values. For me, I set the warning up for anything over 10 million GP, set the sell warning for anything over 1 million GP. And then these are doomsday warnings. You can turn these off, but only once you've seen them a couple times. Personally, I don't find them exceptionally useful, so I turn off as many of them as I possibly can. I do not need a warning when I'm going down the observatory stairs. Next up, we're gonna go to Invent, and there are a ton of really useful functionalities in here. The first is to drag and drop items. So for example, if I wanna release the bunny that I just got, I can actually drag and drop him. There are also a number of confirmation settings for if you wanna get a warning when you're gaining experience from lamps, and if you wanna auto teleport skilling urns and accumulators when full, which should pretty much always be turned on. Destroy empty containers is awesome for invent management as well. What this will do is if you drink the last dose of a potion or you empty a bucket of water or whatever else, it will automatically destroy it so you don't have to drop it. Generally speaking, these are really, really good to keep on. Next up, we're gonna tackle the buff bar. The buff bar is the bar that appears on screen wherever you'd like it that shows your current system buffs and debuffs. The buff bar contains a ton of extremely useful information, but it also can get very cluttered very quickly. So I would strongly advise going into here setting it up to whatever sizing you would like. I personally prefer medium. And then at this point, we want to change a bunch of these filters and toggles. I'm going to keep skill boosts on as well as boss specific ones, because if I'm fighting something that has a status buff or debuff, I want to be able to see it. But then for combat effects, a lot of these I can turn off. I want my potions on so I can tell when I'm overloaded. The same can be said with stat boosting prayers. I want to know what I'm praying and when I'm not. 
But I like to turn off overhead prayers because they appear over top of your character's head. Without this on, I'm going to see my prayer over top of my character's head, and I'm also going to see it appearing on my buff bar. So let's get rid of that. I like to keep offensive, defensive abilities, item effects all on screen. The same can be said with pet effects, auras, and status effects. But as for skilling, I like to turn off my skilling effects and my invention perks. If I'm planning on doing a ton of skilling, I could toggle these back on. And that is how I would recommend setting up the buff bar. The final setting in the interfaces menu is the game clock. I personally don't like to know how long I'm playing RuneScape for, but if you wanted to, you could throw on the game clock and it's appearing on the top right hand corner of the screen. I can turn it on, I can turn it on and make it transparent, or I can turn it off completely. We're gonna skip combat for now and we're gonna head right into the camera settings. From here, you have a bunch of different options for your camera mode, and it's actually pretty well described what each of them does. The modern camera has a maximum zoom and reduced default rotation speed. The classic one is a shorter maximum zoom and increased default rotation speed. The Freedom and Freedom Classic cameras allow for a lot more zoom and a lot more movement. I personally like to play on either Classic or Freedom Classic. Freedom Classic is the same angle as Classic, but it allows you to zoom out even further. But this really does come down to personal preference. If you're someone that used to play a very long time ago, you might prefer the Classic camera angle because it's exactly how it would have been when you used to play. But for a newer player, you might even be into Modern. All of them just change the angle ever so slightly and change the zoom and rotation feeling as well. I would also strongly recommend disabling camera shake while we're here. A lot of different quests and interfaces and cutscenes will shake your camera and it is generally seen as annoying. So you can turn off camera shake here so you never have to deal with it ever again. I'm also gonna mention that to rotate your camera in RuneScape, you can do so by default by clicking and holding down your middle mouse button. In doing so, you don't need to have a hand on your arrow keys at all times and the majority of players dramatically prefer this. While we're talking about camera stuff, I'm also going to talk about skyboxes. Skyboxes change what the entire game around you and environment looks like. And to access them, you can right click on your world map and go to skybox slash filters. From here, you can change the game in a number of different ways and completely customize it to whatever your mood may be. So for me, if I'm scaping in the middle of the night, sometimes I like to throw on nightstone. This is a really nice way to make RuneScape feel extremely unique. You can really play around with a lot of different settings, change just about anything in a number of different ways, and this is one of the best features that RuneScape has that nobody talks about. I mean, look at that. It's just, it's a completely different environment from what I was in before in the best way imaginable. Okay, let's clear our skybox and keep going. The next setting we're gonna look at is skills and experience. And from here, we're gonna take a look at combat XP. This is a very important one because there's actually an interface that allows you to choose which combat styles and which XP allocation you're gonna end up with. So when you're training melee, if you wanted attack, defense, and strength XP to be shared, you'd have to toggle all three of these. If you're just trying to power train defense, you would toggle off attack and strength and 100% of your experience will go into defense. Same can be done with ranged, magic, and necromancy where you can train defense alongside them if you so desire. Before training any of these listed skills, I would strongly recommend going into the settings. They're a little bit too specific for this video, but there are a ton of different options that are very specific to each individual skill, and I would strongly advise looking through this interface before you move forward. As an example, if you go through the necromancy ones, there are a ton of ways to clear confirmation messages, change what the rituals look like, feel like, and play like, and a ton of different warnings that can be toggled on and off to make your gameplay experience a lot smoother. Next up, we're gonna go back into item drops, but instead of looking at the loot system that we've already set up, we're gonna take a look at loot beams. A loot beam appears on the ground whenever you get a valuable drop, but you can actually customize this to whatever value you want. Some monsters may frequently drop something worth 300K, but also have something worth 100 million coins, and you probably don't wanna get a troll beam every time you get that common drop. So if you want to, you can set this as high as you would like. For me, I like to set this at a million coins. There are also a series of custom loot beam animations that you can select if you have them unlocked. For me personally, I'm default all the way. Clue scrolls by default also always give a loot beam, but if you're someone that doesn't enjoy clues, it can feel like a bit of a troll, so you can toggle all of these off. Next up, we're heading into chat and social. And here, there are a ton of really important chat customizations that I would strongly advise setting up. The first one is local timestamps in the chat box. I personally like this because if you get a back-to-back -back and you want to share a screenshot of it, you can actually prove the exact timestamps between the drops. Quick chat is also a built-in RuneScape function, where if you double tap the enter key, you can access it. And quick chat will allow you to share a bunch of information. Like for example, if I wanted to showcase my Raziel kill count, 
I can hit enter three times and type out Raziel. It should autofill with any available options. And then all you have to do is click this and my character will then share my kill count. The next options are very important. Split private chat is awesome because sometimes I'll get a message from a friend and it will be lost in everything else going on in my game. If you don't want that to ever happen, you can actually split your private chat. From here, your private chats are gonna appear somewhere completely different. So if I find someone I want a message and I send them a PM, as you can see, instead of appearing inside my regular private chat, it's appearing in here and also appearing on top of my screen permanently. You can also move this interface wherever you like it. And for me, I like it just above my chat box. If you don't like the width of it, edit mode is the place to go for that. You can go into edit mode, go to your split private chat, and you can make it a little bit wider and a little bit taller if that is what you would like. And just like that, you're all set up. In the chat customization menu, you can also change the colors of all of your different kinds of messages. I generally like to leave them on default. Heading out of chat and social, we're now gonna head into notifications. From here, you can toggle which notifications you wanna receive in game for different updates, different reminders, and different distractions and diversions. This is extremely useful because if you're someone that doesn't wanna do a Gathaxian cache, even though you probably should, you probably don't wanna be reminded every single hour of the XP that you're not getting. So from in here, you can go through and you can toggle them on and off in whatever setup you want. The other setting that's really nice in notifications is sign in messages. If you don't hide player login and logout notifications, if someone wants to hop worlds 10 times, you are going to receive 10 messages saying that this player has logged in and then logged out. It can be very spammy. My advice would just be to toggle this off completely. In notifications, you can also toggle on and off broadcasts of different kinds. So if for whatever reason, you don't want to have to spam grats when someone gets level 99 in something, you can actually turn off the notification and instead of pretending like you didn't see it at all, you will have actually not seen it at all. This works for world broadcasts, friends broadcasts, and clan broadcasts, all the like, and it's all in one place. The last gameplay setting we're going to look at is additional options. And in here, there's only one important toggle. And that toggle is the legacy interface mode. If you're someone with multiple monitors who wants to play RuneScape passively on the side, the legacy interface mode is extremely nice. Soon as you click on it, you're actually gonna get the full on legacy interface from many, many years ago. You lose a ton of functionality, but one thing that you gain is you can actually make the interface whatever dimensions you want at whatever size you want. And I could then gain some XP and do some skilling in the tiniest little custom interface ever. To leave the legacy interface, all you have to do is hit escape, go back to settings, and then re-toggle on your default interface. It should remember how you had it set up before. Okay, we've now saved the most complex for last. Let's go back up through the gameplay settings into combat and action bar. Your first option is which combat mode you want active, full manual, revolution, or legacy. I would never recommend the legacy combat mode for anything, but between full manual and revolution, it's completely up to you. Full manual will remove the gold revolution bar from over top of my main ability bar. And in doing this, I will have to manually fire every single ability that I would like to press. Revolution is really nice for newer players or less experienced players because it makes it a lot less hands-on. If you toggle revolution, anything within this bar that I'm actually able to cast will be cast automatically in combat. So I don't have to press any buttons. You can also customize the size of the revolution bar with this toggle here so that if I wanna make it smaller, I can do that. If I wanna make it a whole lot longer and do some crazy revo bar, I can do that here as well. You can also set things up in Revolution to automatically trigger basics, thresholds, and ultimates so you can actually pick and choose what you want Revolution firing off. For the majority of people, I think either having automatically trigger basics on by itself or having all three on make the most sense. And then in the bottom of this combat mode settings, you've got your summoning familiar. This is a very important one. If you're using a summoning familiar in combat, but you don't want it stealing your XP, you'd want to put it on passive. But for the vast majority of uses, you want your summoning familiar on attack same target. This means that whatever target you switch to and start attacking, your familiar will make an attempt to attack as well. This prevents your familiar from getting stuck nearly as often as on default, and it's really good to have on for the majority of applications. Now we're gonna head into action bar settings, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated, but I'm gonna break everything down one by one so you guys can get whatever settings make the most sense for you. The first setting that I really like is the ability cooldown timer. This is not on by default, and you'll see if I use the anticipate ability, I know it's on cooldown, but I don't know for how long. If I toggle on this timer, all of a sudden, the next ability I use, which will be freedom, you'll see that the cooldown is actually counting down in seconds, so I know exactly when it's coming up again. Ability queuing is also very much a personal preference one. 
How ability queuing works is I can select an ability, whether I'm eligible to cast it or not, and you'll see a circular loading icon over top of it. What ability queuing will do is whenever I'm next able to cast this ability, which means it's off cooldown and I have the adrenaline, it will automatically cast it. This can be extremely nice for a lot of different laid back PVMing as there will be points where you can just queue up an ultimate ability and then go back to whatever you were doing before. But it very much is personal preference because if you're a bit of a button masher, you may not want this on. Automatically trigger regenerate is also on by default and it is an absolute death trap. Adrenaline is the currency of dealing damage in RuneScape, and between fighting targets, you want to be able to keep your adrenaline as high as possible. Having automatically trigger regenerate on will mean that the second I'm out of combat, my adrenaline is going to drain all the way to zero um, because regenerate is going to convert it into a very small amount of HP. This is something that I would absolutely recommend turning off and keeping off forever. Manual spellcasting is also an interesting one. Instead of simply casting a spell and it being on by default, manual spellcasting allows you to click on a spell and then apply it to your target. So for example, if I wanted to smoke cloud one of the bunnies, instead of targeting a bunny and pressing smoke cloud, what it would allow me to do is it would allow me to click on smoke cloud and then cast the smoke cloud on the bunny like that. And if I had runes, I would run over and I would actually tag that bunny with a smoke cloud. It's very much personal preference and it shouldn't matter a whole lot until you're doing very end game magic but when you're at the beginning of your journey, I would say keep off manual spellcasting, and later on in your journey, once you're into the end game, I would say to turn it on. Another really useful functionality is precise adrenaline values. Even though your adrenaline might display at a specific full number amount, like eight or 16%, this isn't actually always the case, and in the display, it does some rounding. Rounding can be annoying because certain special attacks will actually take a decimal amount of adrenaline to cast. So you might think that you have enough adrenaline to do something, but in actuality, you don't. So in my opinion, precise adrenaline values are always worth toggling on. So that if you end up with a random decimal kind of adrenaline, you'll always know if you have enough juice to make your next move. Next up, I've got additional action bars. When we set up our interface, I added four additional action bars because that's how many I need. When you're newer to RuneScape, I would suggest probably only having one additional action bar. And you can also change the names of your specific action bars in here. So for example, my bars nine and seven are currently not named, but they probably should be. Seven should probably be called utility, so we're gonna name it that now. And nine should probably be called buffs. And now my bars have been named. Naming your bars is really nice. I didn't know you could do this until very recently, and I've been playing this game for 18 years. But it allows you to quickly switch between bars without having any kind of complication or guesswork required. Next up, we're going to look at action bar binding. This is a really important one. So the first thing here is switch action bar preset when loading a bank preset. What this will do is when set up correctly, if you loaded up a two-handed magic weapon, as an example, it would automatically switch your bars to your two-handed magic bar. Action bar binding is an awesome way to maximize your action bar space and make sure that you're not displaying a bunch of bars for combat styles that you're currently not using. I've set up my multiple action bar binding so that whenever I switch to a certain weapon of a certain type, two of my bars will swap. My main bar, as well as one of my additional bars, which is action bar four. So for example, if I put on a two-handed magic weapon, what's gonna happen is my bar 17 is gonna swap to 10 and my bar four is gonna swap to bar 14. Both of these bars have my magic related stuff on it. And then when I swap back to my necromancy stuff, both of those bars are gonna swap back to what I need for necromancy. The way to do this seems really complicated, but it's really not so bad. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my bar 17. My bar 17 is called necromancy any. And then the bar that I want it to switch is my main action bar. The bar I want it to switch to is my 17 necromancy single target bar. What that means is whenever I switch to anything necromancy related, it's gonna swap my main action bar to 17. For my magic bar that is 10, anytime I put on any kind of magic weapon, it's gonna swap my main action bar to 10. And as you can see, I put on a magic weapon and my action bar is 10. For the secondary action bars, it's the exact same thing. I've got weapon style, magic any, and then instead of swapping my main action bar, I've got it swapping my additional action bar two, which is the second one listed, and I've got it swapping that bar to 14. And just like that, you've got multiple action bar binding and you're ready to completely maximize your action bar space. The last gameplay setting we're gonna look at is targeting. Targeting is extremely beneficial and a lot of people don't even know about the existence of it. And here we've got target cycling. I would strongly advise keybinding target cycling. For me, it's personally set up as tab. I personally have it set onto radial and maximal target distance, but this is really personal preference and doesn't matter a lot for most things. You can also set it so your maximum target distance is linked to your weapon. 
I don't personally like this because if you're using anything like melee, target cycle basically isn't going to work unless you're standing right on top of something. But the way that target cycle works is instead of having to click on a rabbit to target it, I will instead hit my tab key and it will actually show a little animation over top of the bunny that I am targeting. And it's really, really nice. You can spam it out and you can actually just target all of these bunnies without ever having to click on any of them. The last thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to go into our graphic settings. There are a few other menus in here that are worth looking at and toggling. And then from that point, we're going to be completely set up with our interface. I'm going to go into graphics to whatever I've got them set to, and I'm going to scroll all the way down. From here, we're going to make some graphic changes. The first menu at the bottom of the graphics tab that is worth looking at is depth of field. A lot of players like this off, and basically what it does is it's going to motion blur anything that is far away from your character. You'll see if you look far away in the distance that as I toggle this on and off, everything in the distance is in focus and then out of focus. In focus, out of focus. I personally like it on, but if you're someone that's experiencing any kind of lag, this would be one of the first settings I would turn off because for a lot of people, it can cause issues. The next setting that I'm always going to turn off is loading screens. With this on by default, if I teleport anywhere, I'm actually going to get this ugly loading screen that's going to pop up just like this that uh, is not the best look ever. And if I turn it off, you'll notice that my teleport is exactly the same, takes the exact same amount of time, but I don't get bombarded with the loading screen. It will just load in as my character shows up. Outside of that, the one other graphic setting that I really like is mouse over entity highlight. What this is gonna do is anytime I'm hovering over a clickable entity like Celine here at Lunar Isle, Celine is actually gonna end up highlighted. I really like this because it's a good way to tell what the click boxes are on any particular thing. Especially when you're playing through RuneScape things that may not have been looked at or touched in 10 plus years, a lot of the click boxes can be a little bit janky. So this is a really nice way to be able to visually see anything interactable. It's working on the door, it's working on this character, and this is a setting that I absolutely love and would recommend keeping on. The very last step to building your perfect interface for RuneScape is to make sure that you're saving your UI. This is exceptionally important because you don't want to go through all this work just to get it completely and utterly reset. To save our interface, we're going to go back to edit layout mode. I'm going to go to save layout, and then I'm going to choose whatever I'd like to save over. For me, I'm going to save this over as custom four. I'm going to hit save, I'm going to save, and I'm going to exit. And just like that, I have now saved my interface, and it should remember the last interface I used so that whenever I log into RuneScape, it's going to look exactly like this. And with all that done, we have now successfully built a perfect functional RuneScape interface and done all of our settings. If there's anything you don't like about this interface, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. But also, that is exactly why you get to build your own interface and cater it exactly to whatever you want. So if you're someone that doesn't care about a lot of the interfaces or things that I had open, like my familiars or maybe your friends list, get rid of them. Don't include them and you can make whatever interface you would like. With all that said, thank you all so much for watching this video. Welcome to RuneScape. And I hope this video helped you in becoming the best RuneScape player you can possibly be.